Christos Anesti. Η ερώτα των Αρχιεπίσκοπων Αμερικής Κύριων Κύριων Σπυρίδωνα εις Νέα Νιόρκιν. Γνωρίζομεν η μετέρα αγαπητή ερώτητη ότι ψήφων κανονικών γενομένων εν πανσέπτο πατριαρχικό ναό η Θεοφιλέστατη Τροάδος Αλέξιος, Κομάνων Γεώργιος και Αρχιμανδρίτης Νικόλαος Πισάρης εξελέγησαν επίσκοποι των επισκοπών Ατλάντας Νέες Ιρουσαίες και Διτρόιτ αντιστοίχως. Receive the staff, so that you may shepherd the flock of Christ entrusted to you, and let it be a rod of support for those well disposed to obedience. But to the disobedient and the dissembling, use it as a rod of restraint, a rod of chastening. Axios. Σίμων πάντοτε νυν και αή και εις τους αιώνας των αιώνων. Teresa shall be for you a constant reminder of your utter reliance on the triune God as you carry out the awesome pastoral ministry that has been entrusted to you. It will be a symbol of your own human weakness and of God's infinite divine strength. Therefore, wield this staff firmly for there will always be those who seek to wrest it from your grasp. Wield it wisely, for the work of the bishop requires great discernment. Wield it cour courageously, for it is a symbol of authority that many people despise in our present age of unbelief. Wield it lovingly, for it has both the power to reprimand and to heal in due season and wield it humbly, for it stands as a constant reminder of your utter dependence on the great shepherd of our souls, and of the accounting which you must give to him on the last day for your care of his sheep. May the Lord our God remember your episcopacy in his reign, always, now and ever, and to the ages of ages. My beloved, how much meaning and responsibility is conveyed by the simple words of the Lord to Peter in the Gospel according to St. John as they stood on the shore of the Sea of Galilee, the words which come also to me today as I accept the charge of Christ as spoken to me by his eminence to ascend the throne of this diocese, Vosketa Provatamu, feed my sheep. For if indeed I am called to feed this flock, then I must ask, how will the flock of Christ be fed? How will I, as the archpastor of this diocese, obey the call of Christ to feed and shepherd his sheep in this pasture? How shall I guard and protect the precious and priceless souls entrusted to my care? In this cathedral, under the shelter of the wings of God at the holy altar, is where the work of the bishop begins. But my work as your bishop only begins here, it does not end here. For Jesus Christ, the Good Shepherd, desires his flock to be fed with knowledge as well. He desires that his flock 
be led in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. I am thankful to God that here in the Diocese of Detroit, our youth ministries have been better enabled by the recent addition of a diocesan youth worker who can help us make our youth programs and services vibrant and active. And yet I know that a special commitment on my part will be required to direct and assist the ministries of the church for our young adults and our children. I know personally that this holy diocese of Detroit has been gifted with exceptional priests. Let me say unequivocally that I, as your bishop, am committed to doing my best to bless and strengthen your families, your ministries, and your priesthood, that you may continue to be faithful pastors of the flock of Christ throughout the parishes of this holy diocese. And I, as your newly elected and enthroned bishop, have heard the call of Christ. He has called me by name, and as such, he has called me through his all-holiness ecumenical patriarch Bartholomew, who has given his blessing and support for my Episcopal ministry. I thank his all-holiness, and I assure him of my filial devotion and love to the sacred center of our holy church. Loved, in closing these first remarks to you today, I, in effect, begin my ministry. And so I begin it with the prayer of the great Apostle Paul. May the God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen.
After the retirement of the late Bishop Timothy, the Diocese of Detroit was placed under the most capable guidance of Bishop Maximus of Pittsburgh. Because our beloved Bishop Maximus found it most difficult to be in Detroit and Pittsburgh at the same time, although at times it seemed as though he was, he sent us the most capable and brilliant chancellor in the person of a very Reverend Archimand Wright Nicholas Pizzari, who through the direction of Bishop Maximus and his own unique administrative talents, provided a great deal of stability to the Diocese of Detroit. Distinguished and honored guests, welcome. Bishop Nicholas, on behalf of the Detroit Council, <clears throat> Detroit Diocese Council, we welcome your return to Detroit as our bishop and spiritual leader. <clears throat> All the members of the Detroit <clears throat> Diocese Council pledge to you their support so that the Detroit Diocese, with your leadership, will become a dynamic force in the Greek Orthodox Church in America. Axios. Thank you very much. Your Grace Bishop uh, Nicholas, it gives me great pleasure again to uh, welcome you back here to the Detroit Diocese. And in Gus Fellis' words, I know that uh, we are going to flourish as a good, great diocese again that we were in the past. But uh, with you here with us and uh, working with you before you left us, I know that uh, the Detroit Diocese will flourish again. And I wish you good luck and best wishes and everything that goes along with it. And thank you. Your grace and your graces, on behalf of Detroit Diocese Council and the 43 parishes representing Detroit Diocese, I'd like to welcome you to your new home, your grace. We have been waiting for you a long time. It's like waiting for Easter when you're dieting, you know? <laughs> We are all committed to assist you in your ministry for the betterment of our diocese. We welcome you with open arms and open hearts. May God bless you with many years of health, happiness. He's polite and despota. Ο Απόστολος Παύλος προς την προστιμόθεον επιστολή του παραγγέλει τον αγαπητόν του μαθητή με την προτροπή να κάνει γνωστή την διακονία του με τις λέξεις την διακονία σου πληροφόρησον. Εκ μέρου των ιερέων της Επισκοπής μας, με την ιδιότητα του Προέδρου του Επισκοπικού Συνδέσμου των Ιερέων, σας καλωσορίζουμε και σας υποσχόμαστε την απόλυτον υποστήριξή μας στο θεάριστο έργο που σας εμπιστεύτηκε η Εκκλησία μας. Όλοι εμείς εδώ στην ωραία και προοδοκτική αυτή Επισκοπή του Ντιτσόι, κληρική και λαϊκή, σας καλωσορίζουμε και σας αγκαλιάζουμε με πολύ αγάπη και σεβασμό. Your Grace, distinguished leaders, I've been asked to say a word on behalf of all of the uh, clergy and the faithful of other faiths here in the Detroit area. A word of welcome to you, Your Grace, Bishop Nicholas. You're obviously a man of many charisms, many gifts from the Holy Spirit. The latest, of course, is that anointing by which you have become mystically the presence of the apostles here for your faithful which is a grace for all of us who likewise believe in the lord jesus you have the grace of the love of your people which i have already seen in the hours that you've been in their midst that's a wonderful blessing and so those of us who like you along with you, share confession in Christ, are happy to have you in our midst, happy to have the gifts that God gives us through your sacred ministry. And I also noticed, as I was praying with you in the Cathedral of the Holy Annunciation, a look of trembling on your bishop's face, not of fear, but an awesome awareness of what God has asked him to do a look of hope as he commended himself to God's care. 
And so, Your Grace, I promise that you will have the support of our prayers, the prayers of all of the Christians, along with your own faithful here in Detroit, so that you will be a blessing for all of us, and your service to this church will be a blessing for your people, and all of us will be the richer in Christ. Welcome. I can assure you of one of the greatest things that I have learned from watching our, all of the bishops who have served and continue to serve our church. And that really is that although the bishop may plot a course, the bishop may determine a course of action. He cannot do it by himself. I do not intend to stand alone. I will invite you to stand with me. But not because this is what Bishop Nicholas specifically wants, because we are going to look at what is good for the church. For the church as the Greek Orthodox Church, for the church as the wider range of Orthodox churches in this city, for the churches that represent all those who would confess the name of Jesus Christ, for our city, for our government officials, that they too would receive our blessings and our prayers to walk the walk and path of righteousness. But I cannot do it alone. I need you. You needed a bishop. You have one. I need you, the people of God. I thank all of you individually and collectively who made a great effort to be here. I am, I think in the last year and a half, one of the greatest experiences I had was having a day school in Holy Cross in Brooklyn. It is the DGK. I think D and G are both here. Are you here, D and G? Thank you. They represent, like every parish, some of the best that we have to offer. Because they're willing to come forward and help, just as you will be asked to come forward and to help voluntarily. The priests are here. The people are here. Christ is here with us. And together, we shall succeed in glorifying his name forever and ever. Amen. Amen.